Alright, welcome back. So, now that we have completed the Earth Cave, we need to move on with the story. So, uh, we are not heading to that town. We are heading so far west that we go east. Uh, because that's probably the easiest way to get to where we're going next, which is Crescent Lake. So, I don't think it... I think it's this one. Yes. So, we do need to trek a little ways to get to the town uh -oh, from the ocean. And as you can probably guess, it's named Cres Crescent Lake because the town is nestled in the middle of a lake that's shaped like a crescent. They, and they were so clever at their naming scheme. <laughs> um, so this is a slightly important town. Uh, not for like any of the items, but I mean, silver, mostly silver items. It's not bad. Yeah, and I, I think at this point we have pretty much all silver weapons, or silver uh, defensive weapons, except for these silver gauntlets, apparently, but, um... It's actually kind of a waste to, uh, to do that, because uh, we're actually going to be getting silver gauntlets from a dungeon at some point here in the near future. But, obviously, I don't know that at the at the time of recording this. Alright. So, we need to make our way up to the magic, see what we got. So we got Exit, Soft, Fog 2, and Invis 2. Um, I believe... Fog 2 is the one that I went for, and you cannot go for Exit, unfortunately. Not right now. Um, unfortunately, that is one of the spells that are blocked off by a certain event later in the game. Alright. After a little bit of searching, I did uh, decide what to get, and I think we do go with Fog 2. Um, I think the reason why we went with Fog 2 rather than Invis 2 is Fog 2 is multi. Uh, it affects the entire, par uh, the entire party, while Invis 2 only works on one, if I remember correctly. Sleeping. Unfortunately, I think really only the one tombstone has uh, any mention, any like un unique uh, text to it. So if we come over this way, we see some uh, some old farts over here, over in a circle. They do have unique dialogue. We, the Twelve Sages, were led here by the stars and prophecy. Once the orbs shined with the power of earth, wind, fire, and water, and the four fiends seized those powers. Earth, wind, fire, and water. The world is bound by these four powers. Each element's power focuses at its altar, locate, and crush the fiend. Then, to make it shine, place the orb. Four fiends are bent on the world's destruction. Two hundred years ago, the fiend of wind team teamed with that of the water to destroy civilization. Earth fiend causes the rot of our land. Fiend, or the fire fiend will burn everything up. 
As you restore light to the orbs, we will reveal more secrets. Please see us repeatedly. <laughs> light warriors, only you can make... Only you can prevent forest fires. Quickly, before all is uh, burnt. Hurry to Gorungurgu. And there we go. This is the main reason why we came here, was the canoe. So you need this item to get to the second dungeon. Or what, the, the second fiend dungeon. Uh, so you do have to come here after you've defeated the uh, fiend of Earth. Uh, in order to proceed. So you can't really do things too out of order just yet, but the canoe allows you to travel on uh, fresh water, so not the ocean. But we are not doing that just yet. Um, the way that you get to the Fiend of Fire is by going up the river from where uh, the lake was. But instead, we are actually going to be doing a, something a little out of order here. Um, just because I, I prefer it. So if you remember, we, uh, we were looking at getting that exit spell. Well, my main goal is to get the exit spell as soon as we can. Um, no matter how painful it might be. <laughs> um... It's not that you'd need the exit spell for the fire dungeon, but it does make things a little easier. Especially as we start running out of inventory space. So, this is the correct way to go through this water, through this river maze here. Caribs. Honestly, not too dangerous. Um, honestly, probably the least dangerous enemy you'll run into on rivers. And they're literally just fish. I will say... A lot of the enemies in Final Fantasy 1 really aren't, like, mainstays. I think Final Fantasy 2 really, like, brings in a lot of the mainstays of the series. Not to say that there aren't a few enemies in Final Fantasy 1 that are um, used throughout the series, but it is definitely not as prevalent. Most of the enemies are not as prevalent. And I think that might have just been because the game was so inspired by D&D. They used a lot of similar enemies. So, this is the Ice Cave. This place can be very dangerous. Um, we are coming here a little early. But, I mean, this is the next place that you go after the Fire Dungeon. So, it's kind of whatever you feel like doing. You might want to be a few more levels above, but uh, no matter what, you're you're going to be dealing with some pain here, because there are several enemies that have instant death spells. Alright, so we got Wraith, Spectre, and Geist. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, I do run a lot in this place because it is so dangerous. This is probably the spike in the game. Like, if you felt the first couple dungeons were too easy, this is definitely where it kind of kicks you. Or really hits you. This room in particular is very dangerous. Um, you can run into enemies called mages which have an instant death spell. And usually you can run into a group of maybe like three of them at a time. So yeah, <laughs> practice caution. So I believe 
in front of that chest there is a mandatory encounter, but I don't think the chest itself is anything noteworthy, so I do skip it. Alright, uh, be warned, yep. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do about that, I'm sorry. I, again, you probably shouldn't be watching this if you have epilepsy. Um, thankfully, this dungeon is not the worst of it. The fire dungeon is by far way worse. Uh, so, yeah. Do be careful. Be warned. Definitely don't full screen this if you if your eyes start to hurt because of all the flashing. Yeah, ah, frost dragons. These guys are dangerous because of that blizzard spell. Unfortunately, I could not get my A ice off in time, so we uh, got hit hard. All right. Come on, get a get a cure too. Everyone's hurting. Just gonna use a regular fire because I think we'll be fine. Yep, terminated. Okay, so we got some ice armor. And a silver gauntlet. Yay. And, of course, I fought the ice dragon a second time. Um, when I walked back onto that spot, but obviously I didn't show it. Um, just something to note. Those pools of, I guess liquid ice, liquid nitrogen, yeah, that's what I'm going with, um, do drain a little bit of your health every step you move, but you do not fight enemies while you're walking through it, so trade-offs, I guess. All right. Most of these have just money in them. That's ultimately what a lot of chests in this game have or contain is money. So this is not a mandatory encounter. This was a random encounter that I found. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to run from this for some reason. I don't know if frost dragon or frost uh, giants have like some special thing about them. You can't run. Or maybe frost wolves do. I don't know. I know a fire two would be able to take out the frost wolf, so Man, they are hitting the hit hard. Unfortunately our fire two did not work. Or not work well. Of course. Gotta get their pot shot in before uh, we take them out, of course. Alright, what do we got? Some money. And then I think the next chest is either a very small amount of money or a worthless item that I don't feel feel like uh, stepping on a um, a trap for. <laughs> so, yeah, we're just going to ignore it. Okay. I'm heal. Woo. Just a random heal in the chest in a chest is so like ugh. I believe there is a trap in front of the chest there, uh, so be wary of that. Um, especially when you're using, like, I mean, I in most of these dungeons, you're probably going to use at least half of the heals that you have, if not more. 
just because there are, there is absolutely no like healing other than your magic, and you generally want to save that for in battles or emergencies. Rattling, rattling some bones. Thankfully, they're pretty uh, bad at their jobs here. <laughs> Alright, they're not really worth much, though. Okay, so, got some money. tent and an ice shield. I believe there is something on that tile that we were just on, and there's definitely something here. So this is basically the boss. I. I has an instant death spell that it really likes to use. Um, so, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think... Yep, XXXX. Slain, instant death. Cool. And, yeah, there's no remedy for that. And especially since it was our white mage, um, we're not going to be able to get our white mage back until we leave the dungeon and get back to a town. And I don't feel like resetting at this point. So, unfortunately, Dave is going to get a little out of sync. Make sure to pick you up the main purpose of coming here, the floater, and you do have to go back out. But at least the uh, it leaves you, it exits you from the dungeon. Um, not sure why we couldn't just take that path originally, but so we get to show off the clinic now. You have to <laughs> basically we don't have healthcare or. Or life insurance here. Um, so we have to pay to bring it back. Resting in an inn does not revive your party member. Later games will simplify this, but unfortunately, since it's the first game, that's not how it works. Okay. So, the reason why we went and got the floater item, uh, which is a key item that we do need, uh, is because we are going to be getting one of the main um, things that uh, Final Fantasy I introduced, and really the biggest mainstay of the entire series. So, we come into the desert here, we find our key item, the floater. The airship begins to rise from the desert. Mysterious run. Okay. And there we go. We got our airship. No longer need that stinky pirate ship. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we can pretty much fly anywhere that we want to go. Uh, including the, uh, the uh, fire dungeon right there. But we are not going there just yet. We have a few things that we need to do. Oh, hey, the Temple of the Fiends. So, now that we have our airship, we can go to the northern continents, as well as these small islands here. So, these islands have treasure. They are also owned by the dragons. Well, good dragons, at least. Yeah, I never really understood, like, what the difference between the dragons that we fight versus these dragons. Hey, there he is. That's basically just Charizard. I don't know what you're talking about. You are not afraid of me? Then I am impressed. Wow. We just robbed this guy. <laughs> just stole his entire life savings. It's a really good thing they don't, like, get mad or anything. 
when, uh, when you take their stuff. Alright, so there are a few stipulations with the airship. You can only land on flat ground, so you can't land in mountains, you can't land in marshes, deserts. It has to be flat. Flat grasslands. Can't land in forests. So, the awkward thing that happens is we gotta find a flat spot in order to land. Which is kind of how the game um, prevents you from doing just anything that you want to do uh, once you've gotten the airship. Like, it restricts your movement a bit when, it, when you do that. Oh, Catman. How much I hate you and your upgraded version. You all suck. And unfortunately, we're going to be seeing these guys a few more times. Well, you guys will have to see these guys. But I will. Or I have. <sighs> Poison is probably one of my least favorite status elements in, in games. It's so annoying. And it, it's the status ailment that tends to happen the most. Like in Pokemon, it's usually, it's either that or Paralysis. Both suck in Pokemon, but at least here Paralysis goes away after the battle. While Poison stays and requires that you use an item or magic to get rid of it. Three party members Poison because of a random encounter that got instant <laughs> first attack. The worst part is that they move your party members around when they get a status ailment. Castle of Ordeal. To the northeast. <laughs> I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be, or what really is the point of it. <laughs> It's one of those misleading wall or walkways. Proof of your courage might be anything. Ten gold. These dragons were not very rich. Okie doke. Let's make the trek down this very, very long hallway. And through this door. And yeah. it's a large room. Very spacious. And they have candles for atmosphere. This is Bahamut's room. Bahamut verifies the true courage of all. I am Bahamut, king of the dragons. Bring me proof of your courage to receive the honor due true warriors. And yeah, that is our next goal: is to go and talk, uh, go and find the uh, true honor. Uh, find the uh, the symbol of our courage at the Castle of Ordeals, or I think later game or later versions call it the Citadel of Trials or something like that. Citadel of Ordeals, something like that. Either way, I'm going to call it the Castle of Ordeals because that's what it's called in this game. All right, one last dragon conversation. Brave enough, try meeting the King of the Dragons, Bahamut. Uh, we kind of already did, but... 
Business is not a practice of the dragons of Cardia. Long ago, dragons and humans lived and traded together. Wow. So interesting. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next part.